Now, I think that it's kind of funny that Excel looks through your original data set and examines those values to figure out whether the column is a date column, a value column, or a text column. And it's kind of funny to me that if I have 10,000 rows with values in one row that contains a blank, that completely trips Excel up and they think that I have a text column instead of a value column. The reason that this is frustrating is if you look at our current pivot table, the output from Microsoft is leaving us many, many blanks. For example, cell B8 right now contains a blank, and that's Excel's way of saying that we didn't sell any of A354 on January 2nd. Well, that's fine, but if we didn't sell any, I would really rather see a zero there. This was a problem back in the original pivot table over 15 years ago, and luckily, they've given us a way to correct the problem. We need to go to the Pivot Table Tools Options tab. In the Pivot Table group on the left-hand side, there is an Options dropdown. From that dropdown, choose Options. The Pivot Table Options dialog box is now four different tabs, but the tab that we need is here on the Layout and Format tab. It's the setting for Empty Cells Show. Now, this is already checked in the default to show a blank. If you'd like to show a zero, click inside that text box and type a zero. Click OK. And now Excel fills all of those blanks with a zero. This is a great improvement. I get a question sometimes in my power seminars where people say, hey, is there a way that we could fill that with something else? A couple of dashes or something like that. Yes, you can put whatever you'd like in that field, and Excel will use that anytime that there is no value for that period. Personally, though, I like the zeros. Another minor frustration is that we're obviously working with a pivot table. I mean, on the sheet one, the only thing that's here is a pivot table. One of Microsoft's rules for the ribbon is that if you're not working with the pivot table, it'll put away the pivot table tabs on the ribbon. Watch what happens when I click outside of the table. Those two ribbon tabs have completely disappeared. Now there's really strange logic that if I accidentally click out and then immediately click back in, Excel will redisplay the tabs and take me back to the options tab where I was. However, if you would happen to accidentally click out and click another cell and then click back in, Excel redisplays the tabs, but you're left on the home ribbon instead of the options ribbon where you last left off. I understand Microsoft's logic in this. They're trying to make sure that no one has a picture toolbar left up on their screen for six months after they're no longer using pictures. However, in this particular case, since there's nothing else on the sheet other than the pivot table, I really think that their desire to hide those options when I accidentally click out is really annoying. You just have to remember that if the pivot table field list and the ribbon tabs disappear, you need to click back into your pivot table. Now let's rearrange our pivot table some more. Let's take the product field off and take the date field off. Put the customer field along the left-hand side. To do that, we just have to click the customer field and drag the region field to go across the column labels. You'll notice that Excel still remembers that we have our top 10 auto filter turned on the customer field. You can see the little funnel next to customer in the top of the pivot table field list. Let's turn that filter off so we can see all of our customers. I'll open the drop down next to the customer field and choose clear filter from customer. I now see all of the customers in our data set. 